So right now I got the high beams, the halogen high beams disconnect. These are just the bi-xenon high beams. Hey guys, back in the garage today. So I'm gonna do a quick project today. I don't know if it's gonna be quick or not, but it's gonna be a project. I've got the front end of my Sienna taken apart today. I'm gonna end up taking these headlights apart. I have a retrofit on these headlights already. I need to bake them open again to uh, take some stuff out that I did last time and correct some stuff that I messed up on. So um, I'm gonna go over that today and then I'll show you exactly what I did on my whole uh, retrofit setup so that way next time you know if you guys want to do the same retrofit you can do it too uh, it'll pretty much be the same thing I'm doing now except you know you do it you start from scratch so stay so what I have on here is the 2015 DRL OEM version headlights these are the SEs because I got an SE I retrofitted these probably two years ago and I put a foreground limiter on it I don't really like the foreground limiter that I made so I'm gonna that's what I'm taking apart today and baking open to remove that foreground limiter you know and I'll go over all the details on my whole retrofit once I get it open that way if you guys want to do this uh, TLR uh, retrofit you can do it yourself it's a Morimoto uh, replacement projector it's pretty much a drop-in projector for this car you got to do a couple little mods and I'll show you those mods they're pretty simple with a drill mold you can take care of it and I think a drill cut a little slit for the uh, by xenon because these are actually they've got a high beam and a low beam so now your high beam is going to be you know awesome on this because you'll have the halogen high beam and then you'll have the hid high beam also which the factory hids and the halogens you don't have that dual by xenon or by projector for your high beam so that's really cool part of this uh, retrofit and you know the projectors are pretty cheap they're like 110 dollars or 120 dollars something like that and you get them from uh, trs you get them from lightworks and any of the authorized retailers and i'll have a link to them on their ebay stores or the actual website in the description as far as my HID setup goes, I originally set these up. I have got my Denso uh, ballast. So I've got a ballast here and I got one on the other side. I'm actually running the D4S uh, setup right now that I took out of my IS out there when I did that retrofit. I originally ran the D2S on this with some Morimoto bulbs, but I ended up using my CBIs that I have. They are the D4S CBIs from the IS since I already had them and I used that ballast. So these ballasts are actually potted and everything and they're water resistant for this application. I mounted it right on the frame rail on this side. Uh, I'm using the Morimoto relay system because when I originally set this up, the circuit on the Sienna wouldn't fire these OEM Denso ballasts because they were drawing too much current on the initial startup. It wouldn't, yeah, they wouldn't come on uh, unless I turned the lights off and back on again. So that's what I had to do. I had to use that relay. So on this side, see, this is the same location. I basically mounted it. I drilled the hole to the frame rail and mounted the ballast there. And then I ran it up here and I ran an extension, uh, D2S extension into the headlight to get it, get the signal up there. You can mount them anywhere else. You, I think I might have I originally tried to mount them here, but it didn't work too well. I didn't really like it mounted there. So I, because it would have been a lot closer to the top and I wouldn't have to do the extension. Maybe because I didn't have it on this side. I don't know. Um, I forgot my reasoning for it, but it must have been maybe it's in a dangerous spot that might fall off or get hit. I don't remember. Anyway, you guys can mount the ballast wherever you feel that you can want to mount it. Some people just like bootleg it to the bottom of the headlight and there's a lot of wiring over here so it's kind of a pain to figure that one out. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead with the project and quit talking. <laughs> Well, what a mess of wiring I did back here. Uh, if you saw on there, uh, when I was taking it off, I was struggling a little bit with some of these because I had them zip tied. It would have been better just to undo everything as much as I could before I took the headlight out. I should have done that and would have saved me a little bit of time. I did get this little piece stuck here that it popped out of the fender, but then I took it off the bracket on the headlight and it was fine. Over on this side, I learned from my mistake on that side and I undid everything first under the three bolts for the headlights and it pops right out you gotta be careful the fender right here kind of might scratch the lens i did get a couple scratches on the driver's side it'll buff out but it was just some little minor micro scratches from it touching if you look at my wiring on this project i try to keep everything as oem looking as possible so like this morimoto relay system comes with these like braided 
wires. I try to keep it along the line. I kept, you know, I zip tied it to the existing harnesses as much as I could. I actually, this one right here, I actually put my own little OEM type harness in and then over to here where I had to use regular zip tie and then on that side. So it's pretty OEM looking if you didn't know any better when you're, you're connecting up to this thing. So that's, uh, so if, yeah, if you guys ever have to do HID wiring, just kind of try to keep that OEM. A lot of people do it ghetto and they'll just like run it across the radiator support and all that. But you know, you guys know me, I like to keep everything nice and OEM looking. So yeah, the headlights are off the car right now on this table. So yeah, if you guys look closely back here, I've got got this dust cap, which is one of the dust caps I got from TRS to do it. See, I uh, had to cut a hole at the bottom here just to get the harness through, but when it clips on, it's pretty nice uh, and sealed. Keeps the water out of there. On this side, I haven't pulled it apart, but you can see right here, yeah, the harness comes to the bottom. And what I have on this harness is basically the the two wires for the ballast and then the high beam wiring for the bi-xenon. So before I put them in the oven to bake, I'm gonna have to take out all the bulbs, kind of strip everything I can off the housing. That way I don't melt or anything. So like the parking light up here, the high beam, uh, this harness I can't really do much about. That's the DRL harness. And I take this out and the rubber boots out and the rubber boots here. I'm gonna probably wipe everything down one time just to make sure it's clean before I stick it in my oven, which I use for food. So yeah, I'd recommend you guys do the same just to kind of keep your wives happy. You don't want your wife going to use it and then finding dirt somewhere in the oven and then complaining to you. We got all the lenses and everything taken apart. So this one I actually put in the original halogen projector to show you guys what to do and how to do the retrofit. So the original halogen projector is actually held on by three screws, one up top here, and then two on the bottom there. The, there should, seems like there should be a fourth one, but there's not, it's really just a clip for the lens. And uh, it's just a regular Phillips screw that you unscrew. And then you take that out, and then I'll show you in a minute when I put the camera down. But uh, this is the Morimoto projector that I retrofitted before. So it's by Xenon, so it's got the little solenoid at the bottom that drops the shield, so it does a full high beam. And then I originally put in these uh, foreground limiters to limit the foreground, but it was way too much foreground limiting and it, it left two little weird shadows in front of my bumper. So I'm gonna just remove that because for the minivans and cars that are pretty high up, where you're sitting high up, you don't really need the foreground limiter. You don't really see the foreground as much as you do on like a smaller car or a lower car. So on like a lower car, you might need that. Probably not as aggressive as I made it on this one. So yeah, th this is the other headlight that has the Mori motor projector mounted already. And like I said, I'll show you guys all the little details once I unscrew it and, and show you what needs to be trimmed to get it to fit 100%. Like I said, this is, uh, so you just take the three screws out of here. So yeah, once you unscrew it, you just pull this thing out slowly. And on here, what you're gonna find is, it's got actually this little guide thing that's a nub that guides it on both sides. And you don't need that for the Morimoto ones. So if you look at the Morimoto ones, they don't have that on the back. So really, it's, 
There's Morimoto 4TL. This is the fourth generation TL uh, replica. You know, it's called the replica and a drop-in because all the bolt pattern is the same, but everything, nothing else other than the bolt pattern uh, is, is the same. So you take that out. What I had to do originally was I trimmed these two nubs right here. So, so you got two of them right there that used to come out to guide that um, the two sides. So I just drill mold that down and removed it. So same over here. I drill mold it enough to fit. I didn't take the whole thing all the way because it's tight against the, the side wall right here. And uh, when I drill mold it, I actually used the vacuum. I had a vacuum on it. I drill mold it so I wouldn't get dust everywhere. Because that's the problem when you drill mold and this thing, you don't want dust into your chrome and all that stuff. So I used a, a vacuum on one hand and a drill mold on the other and I just shaved it on both sides. And the one other thing is on the on the Morimoto, you got this little harness right here for the solenoid. So it's the, the plug for the solenoid there, which was what I was struggling with earlier when I was trying to take it out. I was trying to unplug the harness on that. And it you need to notch a little spot right here. So it's a tiny spot right there where you notch to get that. And that's really the only modifications you need. Once you get those in, it, it fits right into there. So I'll zoom in more so you can see it. So yeah, right here, you see that little notch right there where I zoomed in and, and you cut it out. So you just kind of measure it, eyeball it, and cut as much as you need to. And then here and here. So you can see right now on the profile where you trim that down. So I'll zoom in a little. Hopefully it focuses a little better. But yeah, right there. You can see it right there. And then right there where I trimmed it. It's kind of hard to focus because of the chrome. It's, the, it's a little contrast there. So yeah, you can see where I trimmed it right there and then right there. So that's all you really need to do to get the Morimoto 4 TLRs to fit on this halogen. So this halogen projector that comes in this uh, Sienna, it's a very common projector it's used on the Sienna, the Odyssey, the Honda Accord, um, I think like a GM car, I think one of the GMC Colorados or whatever. Actually the Colorado, you could actually retrofit that car uh, without even baking the headlight open because it's bolted from the back and the opening on that housing is so huge that you could unbolt all three screws, pull the projector out and put the new projector in without ever baking the headlight open. So that one's pretty cool. I think it's on the GMCs or the Colorado or one of those GMCs. But uh, yeah, this is a very common Stanley projector used across many platforms and many models and you know brands. So more than likely some of your cars might use this i think the subaru might even use this but anyway uh this is a you know it's got a frosted type lens it's not really a freshenal lens there is some little dim not dimples but round you know lines in it but it's not a, considered freshenal it's a frosted lens a slightly frosted lens and one of the things the two years i was running plug and play uh h11 bulbs on here i this thing's got what they call squirrel finders. So there's under here, but what I did was I was able to access that with a little access hole at the bottom of these housings for the DRL. And I ended up kind of rigging some JB weld and a little piece of aluminum to block those squirrel finders because that helps to reduce blinding. So glare and blinding out of those uh, squirrel finders. Those squirrel finders are, what they do is they reflect light up into the trees and up high. So that's causes a lot of glare when you have plug and play HIDs. And they were decent cut off and performance for the two years I was using them. But then, you know, when they, when these TLRs came out, I hopped on them right away, right when they came out. I was trying to experiment with like getting some actual TL projectors and some Avalon projectors, and I actually have those, but I never ended up putting those in because I didn't like the cutoff on them and I didn't want to mod them too much. There was a lot of work to fix the shield on it. Um, but yeah, I was very happy when these guys came out and they were by Xenon and nice, perfect cutoff and a nice step. It's got a DOT step, not your ECE step. But it's okay. I mean, it's a very steep, almost right angle step. Yeah, I mean, like overall, very easy retrofit if you're into this kind of stuff. So to mount the Morimoto ones on, you reuse the existing screws, the three existing screws on here uh, with the three holes that line up with it. What I ended up doing, because uh, the way this thing is designed, they had this little spacer with these screws for the, the lens holder. And what it does is, if you look right there, it kind of... See, this is the hole, the, the bracket with the hole, and they have that spacer. So what happens is when it goes flush onto here, it doesn't, 
doesn't sit flat. So I think the spacers are totally optional, but I ended up just putting those washers just to make it flush. So that way when I tightened down the, the Phillips screw, it held and it grabbed, so it had something to grab to. Um, what I did was, you know, these were just a little 16th of an inch or whatever, 18th of an inch, I don't know what they were, but they were pretty thin uh, washers I found at Home Depot, like a pack of 50 of those things or whatever. So yeah, you just basically put it in there and, and make sure you have all the wash. And the one thing I noticed uh, when I put it in too, these holes are fairly large, so I used one of those on the either side of the screw just to make sure I had something to hold it onto there. So I'll go ahead and do it now and then we'll make sure that things fully set the way it would be if you were retrofitting this for the first time. Just removing the old foreground limiter that I had. I, I used that fourth nut to um, hold it. So that's, that's the foreground limiter right there. Just a little piece of aluminum I cut out. Thing with these washers too, they're gonna be hard to get into these holes because what happens is you put the two washers on but then you gotta, you gotta get in there but then you got the other ones to get into so it's, ah, man. So yeah, they keep on dropping on you. And you don't want to over tighten these too much because the plastic is very brittle so you want to tighten it just enough pressure so you don't mess up that um, the holes or strip them. So we got those uh, foreground limiters taken out. Right there, on this one it was pretty easy. I just ended up unscrewing that bolt right there where I was holding it on. I unscrewed this one. The washer didn't drop out or anything, so that was good. Got it in there. So if you wanna see the side profile where that washer would have been, it would have been right, ooh, right there where, see the washer, and it kinda, of, when I put that washer in, it kinda of steps these off the, off the, you know, off the edge a little so it doesn't touch. So that's what my intent was when I used those washers to get that in there. Over here on the lens, I wanted to show you guys something on the lens is my car, which is an SE, and I think the Limiteds have the same affliction. So what happened was, like when I originally got these, like brand new, the rings were nice and smooth all around. And I noticed after driving for a month or so, they started developing these little bubbles. And I actually had these exchanged under warranty, both headlights like within the first two years of owning the car i didn't retrofit these till maybe like two years after i owned it i was riding around with some plug and plays for a while i had them brand new and then i thought it would go away but it started developing that same affliction again so it's just like that chrome i think it's just a defect in the, the manufacturing of the chrome rings that causes that because what happens is when these are parked outside or when you have the lights on, it creates a uh, magnification, like the sun magnification. So what it's doing is, it's using, like the, when it hits, the incidental light hits the projector right through there, it reflects it back down to that little ring and it causes the chrome to heat up and bubble. So that was my theory on it. And a lot of other people have had the same problems with that uh, whole setup on their cars. So now I got everything back you know what i needed done i'm gonna quit talking i put all these back together i don't really need to do anything now else since these things are open but if you were doing some customization like an you know upgrading drls or whatever this would be the perfect time to do it i like the way the drls are on here so i'm gonna leave it i know some other people like lightworks has done it where they've taken part uh this strip and disabled the factory drl put in a switchback tube in there where you you get regular DRLs during the day and then switch back turn signals on that same strip. But, you know, I don't really need all that. I don't wanna, if I ever, if mine ever failed for some reason, I would do it. But since they're perfectly fine, I'm not. One thing I'm gonna do when I put it all back together, the butyl glue on here is pretty thin to my standard. So I'm gonna, I still have some from my other retrofit. I'm gonna lay down a, a tiny strip of it all around just to give it some extra glue. 
because I've had these, this is probably the third or fourth time I've opened these now to do whatever I need to do. And the last time I opened it, it started fogging up. So I had to, that time I actually baked them open again. I don't even think I fully opened it. I just baked it, opened it a little bit and then squeezed it back together just to get the glue malleable again. So I'm gonna do that this time with, with more glue. So that way I'm guaranteed I won't have any kind of fogging or leaking. So right now I got the high beams, the halogen high beams disconnect. These are just the bi-xenon high beams. So I replugged up the halogen high beams. That's with the halogen high beams. Hey guys, thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video. I hope you got something out of it uh, and doing the proper HID projectors for the Sienna, you know, putting those uh, four TL, four TLRs, yeah, it's a mouthful. Every time I say that, that projector name, it's a mouthful, but it's a great projector. It works on a lot of different cars, Hondas, uh, Toyotas, you know, Chevys, GMCs, whatever that uses that same projector. And it's the proper way to do an HID uh, retrofit, you know, it beats the plug-and-play HIDs any day as far as glare output and you know just cut off and when you're driving down the road and you see that flicker and you see the output and the cutoff and everything you'll you know you'll be glad that you did this uh, retrofit but anyways um, you know I promise I do I'll do more content on the Sienna as I get more projects for it and f you know find some time to do projects for this car and I'm gonna continue doing projects for my IS out there as always you know you guys you know I always post once or twice a week on projects for the IS but anyways uh, I'll see you guys next time don't forget to subscribe to your channel like the video and uh, I'll see you on the next one